This is vaguely Christmas themed, right? Rovers aren't great for a number of reasons in Space Engineers, and whilst that doesn't stop us from trying to make them work, what if I told you there was a much faster way to travel on land? No longer do you need to worry about every dip and bump whilst you're driving along. No longer will you be stopped by every slight incline. With the hovercraft, you cannot be stopped. One of the advantages of building a hovercraft compared to other things we've built in the past is that it's really simple to do. To start off with, you need a landing gear, just place it as you normally would and let it lock. Or in my case, keep placing them until one locks up right. And then build a small pillar of blocks. You'll need quite a high pillar as you're going to be placing blocks underneath the platform you're about to build. Now build a line of blocks out from here. And then once you've built this line, you need to enable symmetry. Now on PC, you can press M to do this. And on console, it's right bumper and X. And once you've enabled symmetry, you click and now it's reflected where that red line is. And you can see now if I place a line of blocks, it places it on both sides. So I'm just going to place a couple of lines of blocks in order to build out my platform. It doesn't really matter what size, you just kind of build out what you need to begin with. And then we'll go from there. Now that I've got my platform roughly built, the next thing you'll need is a wheel. So get your wheel suspension. I'm just going to place one here in that corner. Perfect. And then I'm going to place another one in the other corner. Now, the orientation of these doesn't really matter, nor does it matter if it's the left suspension or the right suspension, as, as you can imagine, we're not actually going to be using them as wheels. Now, the reason we're using wheels for this is twofold. Number one, wheels are virtually indestructible. You can take pretty much any impact from them, and because of their unique properties, they don't take any damage. You see there, no damage at all. You can pretty much drop them from any reasonable height. Obviously, if you drop them from high enough, you probably will run into issues. But for the most part, you can be throwing wheels from outer space and you'll probably be fine. There you go, it just bounces. And I'm imagining if I get close to this, yep, no damage whatsoever. Wheels also bounce on impact as well, which is also very useful for this, but this isn't the main reason we're using them. If you place a cockpit on your newly built platform, and then you're probably gonna need a source of power in order to do the next bit. So I'm just gonna place a battery, because in creative, batteries charge up automatically. Get into the cockpit. You see, we've got our wheels here. So if I go to the terminal, select our wheels and group them. I'm going to call it wheels. Terrible naming scheme, I know. I'm going to turn off steering, turn off propulsion, turn off brake, turn off parking brake, turn off air shock. Set the height offset to zero. As you can see, they're all at the same distance now. This is why it doesn't matter whether you use left or right wheels. None of the other settings really matter here, apart from the last one, friction. Turn friction all the way down to zero. This is where the hovercraft part of this comes in, as in real life, there is no way to make zero frictionless surfaces, but in Space Engineers, you can just, you know, defy the laws of physics. Speaking of defying the laws of physics, there's something deeply wrong in the universe that has allowed me to nearly hit 20,000 subscribers, and it's Christmas. So, you know, give me a gift by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. So if I remove my little pillar now that holds it up, you should see if it bounces a little bit and it's on the ground. And now if we simply place a thruster on the back of this and one or two gyroscopes, we have our little hovercraft. If I get into the cockpit, fire my thrust off a little bit, we'll see that we're sliding along. And I'm not firing the thrust at the moment, I'll even turn off the dampeners, and you can see we're going. Because there is no friction on these wheels, we will basically never stop. Now, of course, gravity will eventually slow us down. If we go up a slope, we won't be able to continue going, because gravity will pull us back the other way. But if you're going downhill, you will never stop. And this is a very easy and effective way to travel in this game. And see how it just glides along the ground. Look, we're at 30 meters a second, barely doing anything. Obviously, trees will stop you if you hit them. For the most part, there's nothing that can stop us. And we've only used one thruster to build this. Now, I wish I'd picked someone to do this where there wasn't as many trees. <laughs> oh, we're now bouncing off into space. And there you go, hit the ground, bounce, no problems whatsoever. Oh, just don't flip it. That's the one thing you don't want to do. As long as you land on your wheels, you should be fine. Now, you can see I built this quite wide. But that's also because of the flipping thing I mentioned. You really don't want to flip this thing. That's the only way you can really damage it. So the wider this thing is, the better. I am really struggling to stay on the ground here. Oh, uh, come on. Ooh. Oh, there you go. One of the big issues with this version of it is actually it's not that heavy. So it is gliding around a little bit. But that's quite a simple demo of the hovercraft. Obviously, we can go more advanced. But it's one thing for me to tell you that this is good. But it's another thing for me to actually show you that it's good. But this rover here is the rover that I built during my tutorial series, link in the description. And we're just going to quite simply use this to go up the hill and time how long it takes to get up there. So we're either going to go until we get to the top of the first ridge, or we're going to go until we flip over. Then we'll create a marker and then we'll take a hovercraft to the same point and we'll show you how much faster it is at doing that. Now, as you can see, the rover on flat terrain is quite good. It's still not as fast as the hovercraft. We were going roughly 30 meters a second before, but it's when we start to get to the more difficult terrain, like the incline in front and the more bumpy terrain that is on the side of the mountain, that will start to struggle. So here we go, the first incline, and we immediately slow down 10 meters nearly. Oh, we're still going. And as we start to get steeper and steeper, the rover will begin to struggle more. 
And eventually this mountain basically becomes vertical, so it's going to be almost impossible for us to get up it. Here is a perfect example of that rough terrain I was talking about. My wheels are struggling to get a grip on the terrain. Obviously I can just go around right here, but in some places when you go over terrain, there's no real good way to go around the problematic terrain. You either have to go halfway down the hill to get around it, or you have to do a massive detour to the left and right. There's some quite difficult terrain coming up here, and this will be a perfect example of how to compare the hovercraft to this vehicle. We're just gonna go straight over it. First person, oh, struggling a little bit, and it's a bit more bumpy up here, so let's see how we get on. We haven't even got to it yet, we're already at an almost standstill. Uh, come on, wiggle. Wiggle for victory. Oh, too much wiggle. <laughs> uh, come on. Ah, we're over. Good. Okay, that only took a couple of seconds. You see how much we're struggling here? This obviously isn't the best rover. This is something I quickly threw together for a tutorial. But it's clear to see just how difficult it would be for any normal rover that isn't specially built for this terrain. Oh. Sorry, concentrating, concentrating. No, no. Ah, oh, never mind. I think that's. I think that might be all she wrote. Oh, that's my wheel. Bye. Whatever thought I was having before, I can't remember. <laughs> so we're just gonna have to say that this is how far we got. 2.32 kilometers away. I'm gonna place a GPS here. Call it end. Make it red. And then this is as far as we have to get our hovercraft to. I'm gonna try and roughly take the same path, so it's a fair comparison. And I'll also leave the rover there so we can overtake it. So, this is a hovercraft I built earlier, one that I made for testing of this video. If I just turn it over, you'll see it's roughly the same width. It's got the slightly bigger wheels underneath. These are the 5x5 wheels, where we only use the 3x3 wheels on here. And obviously it's slightly wider. It's also got a lot more bulk to it, and that's on purpose. As we saw before with this other hovercraft, it kind of floated around, and because this is heavier, and this is heavy armour at the bottom, it keeps it closer to the ground. The only problem between these two versions that I'd probably change is that because this doesn't have any bit around the edge, the wheels are always touching the ground. But I kind of wanted to hide the wheels to give it the impression that it's hovering. That shouldn't really make any difference. And if I get in the cockpit, you'll see at the bottom, I've got the option to turn down and up the friction on the wheels. And this is just for stopping. So when I want to stop, I just turn the friction up on the wheels. And when I want to go again, I turn the friction back to zero. So I'm starting roughly where the rover started. So three, two, one, go. I see immediately whilst there's a rover, we were going about 20 meters a second. Oh, don't, don't. We're fine. <laughs> we're going much faster. If there wasn't trees, I feel like I would definitely gun it at maximum speed. But the trees are definitely an interesting obstacle. I feel like someone needs to deforest the Earth like planet and space engineers. There's just too many trees. Here we go. We're starting to go up. Now, obviously, this is better than a rover. We can already see that as I bash all the trees out of the way. It's much cheaper than a ship. Because, like I said, you only need the one thruster. And if you're better at driving than me, it'd probably be more effective than a ship. And on this, you don't really need to worry about the terrain, aside from the trees. So you can basically gun it at full speed, even flying through the air. And then because of your wheels, you can land on the ground safely and you won't take any impacts. So here we are at the same terrain as before. And actually, my biggest problem here is the ring. I feel like if I had my other hovercraft, I could get up here quite easily. Right, I've removed the bottom layer, as you can see, of the ring. And you can immediately see this is much better. Maybe hiding the tyres isn't such a good idea. But the hovercraft still works in principle. You see, I'm going straight over this rough terrain. What am I wedged on now? God damn it. It's supposed to be a demonstration. I'm stuck on blocks again. Right, death wall blocks. Friendship ended with aesthetics. You see, because of the wheels, we're just gliding over the terrain. And here's our end point, where we got stuck last time. But we've got over the rough terrain now. Nice if we didn't bounce so high every single impact. And a nice tree to soften our impact. And it looks like we're bringing the tree with us. Oh, and the tree's gone to space. Up the friction to slow us down. And there you go. So, as you saw, it got up the hill much faster than the rover did. And it had much less difficulty, once we removed all the blocks we didn't need, to claim the victory in this challenge. But, and as always a but, we can go much further than this. So this is the hovercraft I pulled off the workshop, and this is the final form of the hovercraft design. But not only does it have the kind of ring that I was trying to emulate on mine, but more importantly, underneath it has more tyres. But one of the big problems we were having is that our hovercraft kept hitting the ground on the edge of its ring. So using tyres on this, not only does that soften the impact, it also reduces the impact of these blocks actually being around the edge. So with this being the final form of it, and being in its ideal terrain, flat land, let's see how good this thing actually is. So straight away, 100 meters a second, and you can see we are absolutely gliding along the land. Never have you seen something go this fast on the land before. Ooh, that's where I want to go, the ice lake. All I have to do is make sure I don't take off into space. <laughs> here we go, land on your wheels, you're fine. Let's get rid of some of that momentum. And here we are, flat land. Here we go, 100 meters a second. Absolute perfection. One of the things that's actually super cool about this is that there's not really a normal way to travel like this in Space Engineers. There's rovers and ships, but ships kind of be expected to do this, whereas anything on the land isn't. And this is a super cool and different way to actually play the game. And again, it's a super cheap way in the early game to get really fast around the planet. 
here we go, edge of the ice lake, and we just continue on. No difference whatsoever. The golden fields in front of us. And with no trees, the perfect environment to actually travel around. Ow. <laughs> so, will you be using the hovercraft? And, more importantly, are there any other weird and wacky Space Engineers builds you'd like to see? Let me know with a comment below. And as always, like and subscribe for more Space Engineers content.